What's up everybody, it's Man of Low Moral Fiber here, my name's Luke, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Shredifier. I've been doing a small series here on some of the bad weapons in Borderlands 2, and someone told me to test out the Shredifier. Now, I don't actually expect the Shredifier to be a bad weapon, but at the very least, I have noticed that it is underused, which kind of qualifies it, at least for demoing. And we'll see exactly if there's a reason why it's underused. Some things to note about this weapon uh, right away is that it has a very high fire rate at 13.4, but because it is the Vladoff spinny barrel type gun, it is one of those guns that takes a moment to actually reach its maximum fire rate. It also says it has an accuracy of 88.9, but its accuracy is actually a lot worse than that. Granted, it's a little ways to this wall here, but you can see that uh, the recoil of this gun actually makes the accuracy pretty bad. And that's not very good at all. Um, even up close, hopefully we get bullet decals on this wall here. And we don't. I think that's really stupid when you don't get bullet decals on specific surfaces. Um, even close up like this, its accuracy isn't great. I'm managing the recoil just slightly, and as you can see, that's still not a very tight spread. However, some of Zero's skill points when we actually spec in here will help with that a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and spec in, build a skill build real quick. I'm going to put five points in accelerate, or velocity, excuse me, and then another five points in uh, precision. And that should help with the accuracy quite a bit because precision will tighten the spread just by boosting the accuracy. And then velocity will boost the bullet speed. And um, that will give the bullets less time to actually deviate before they get to their target, which should be nice. Now, this skill build that I just specced into here isn't going to specifically boost assault rifles in any way but it is a good general gun build with zero and so it should help us out here with this gun and we'll see how it does in the washburn refinery i've brought one in corrosive and one in shock so that we can deal with the shielded enemies as well as the armored enemies we'll go ahead and get slag and kunai on this guy and we'll see how quickly we take him out now it works pretty good against loaders actually because they have so many critical hit spots um, excluding sergeant loaders actually um, because you know the gun does have that kind of large um, spread pattern and everything like that, that we should actually hit quite a few of those critical hit spots as we move around, which is nice and it will boost our damage quite a bit. I did not spec into Two Fang because the gun has such a high fire rate that uh, Two Fang will not give us the actual boost that it would. Go ahead and deal with this guy on the ground here. When enemies are small, this gun does lose a little bit of its potency because, uh, you know, it has that kind of large recoil deal with the exploder right quick as well oops I missed with my transfusion there that was bad deal with the R loader get to a place where we can actually look around and see what we've got left now one thing about this weapon is that uh, it's not particularly ammo efficient it's not terrible with ammo like some assault rifles are and it is kind of mitigated by the fact that you have a fairly deep assault rifle ammo pool. However, it is something to watch out for when using the gun. If I do get too low on ammo, though, um, the game should start waiting sniper or er, assault rifle drops, excuse me, because I'm only using assault rifle ammo. Excellent. So we take these guys out here. You'll notice a lot of them falling over. I'm not specifically aiming for their hip joints, but like I said, because the Shredifier has the uh, recoil and kind of poor accuracy where it moves around a bit, I do often get critical hits on their hip joints, and so that's causing them to actually fall over. So we made it out of the first area with still quite a bit of ammo left, and so it's not really that ammo inefficient, and it actually performed pretty well in that first area, I'd say. Granted, I was doing pretty well with Slag and Kunai, and I am wearing a Corrosive Bone of the Ancients to boost the corrosive damage, but we'll see how it does up here against this badass enemy, which is going to have a little bit more health. Because he is so large, though, we shouldn't really have to worry about missing any of our shots, and that should be nice. Excellent. So we took that guy out pretty quickly there, actually, before he was able to bust our shield and in under a magazine. So that's pretty nice. Still have quite a bit of ammo left as we're reaching this staged fight up here, and that's good news. Ghosty. 
Now, I don't want to reflect a bunch of bullets off this power loader here. I don't know what the corrosive chance is on this weapon. Oh, it's only 6%. So you shouldn't, uh, you know, necessarily kill yourself if you get reflections with this weapon. But it would be something to watch out for. Sometimes it's hard to tell if you've slagged an enemy with your Death Blossom, but you can kind of judge it if you've got a good feel for it by how much damage the Kunai actually do once they've exploded. See, they didn't do very much damage against that enemy there, so I think he still needs slag. Excellent. Follow through was able to get me away from those exploders there, and that's always nice. We'll encourage some of these exploders to just blow up. Um, that way I don't have to waste ammo on them. Excellent. Now that we've encouraged most of the exploders to blow up, we'll get back to fighting enemies that actually have guns. Excellent. Hopefully those transfusion trails will get to me around that gate there. They did, so that was nice. Now this gun isn't very great with boar because it doesn't have a uh, impact effect or anything like that. But because you were putting so many rounds down range, you'll actually get a lot of boar opportunities, which actually makes it pretty decent with boar. And that's a good thing. If we line up a boar shot here, oh, that's an exploder. We can't really line up a boar shot if he's going to run away and kill himself, but if it was two gun loaders there, I could have shown you what I was talking about. Got two more enemies here, it looks like. I need this hot loader to go ahead and jump down. Don't want to catch this damage over time. Keep in mind that after I kill the hot loader, the uh, badass loader is going to come out of that gate there, so we're going to have to be ready for him. Use my follow through bonus to kind of break line of sight with him real quick. Now we have enough ammo and grenades and deception and everything to go ahead and get ready to kill this guy. Now he slagged me, or I slagged myself kind of with that transfusion grenade, so I'm going to have to be a little bit wary here. But we're wearing him down pretty quick and he's actually not going to be able to kill us. So that's pretty good stuff right there. Um, I am going to go ahead and make use of these two ammo boxes before we proceed to the next room and kill some enemies in there. Excellent. This way we just have a few more slag transfusion grenades and uh, assault rifle ammo to actually deal with the coming challenges. We'll go ahead and mess with some of the enemies in there and then we're getting pretty close to the end of the video I'd imagine. I don't like to make these too awful long because I think you guys probably understand the gist of what I'm trying to get at pretty quick. And overall um, I would definitely not consider the Shred of Fire to be a bad weapon at all. It's doing really well, actually. Um, it's not the greatest, you know, but uh, it is pretty good. Now, I caught a fire damage over time there, and that might end up killing me, which sucks. But, um, I killed that guy there before he could apply another stack of it to me, and then there was another fire loader, so I'm definitely going to die because of that, and that is awfully aggravating. Oh, I made it? That is good stuff. Um, try to kill this guy before he can get another fire damage over time on me. My transfusion grenades got to me, so good stuff there. Awfully aggressive on those uh, two hot loaders to start out there, and that's bad news. We're killing enemies, we're doing well. I wish Kunai did not get caught on the, uh, I wish Kunai did not get caught on the decoy there, that's always aggravating. Excellent. So you can see that uh, Boar helped me a little bit there while I had those... Why isn't the decoy going a little bit further out? That's twice that's happened to me now. Wasted kunai because of it both times, too. So kind of irritating there. Um, but as you can see, the gun performed pretty well, actually. I'm not sure exactly why it's not too popular to use. I guess one reason why it doesn't get used too much among Salvadors, for example, is because it has terrible accuracy when you're not aiming down sights. If you're not aiming down sights, the gun is almost worthless. Um, it looks like there's another hot loader out there, so that'll be something to watch out for. Find that hot loader and kill him, and then we'll go ahead and cut off the video. Yep, there is another hot loader. Hopefully his damage over time doesn't come and kill me. It's weird how damage over time is the biggest threat at overpower levels. It seems like that would have been an easy thing to go ahead 
and change, like make it so that only level 72 damage over time gets applied to you, but that's not the case. Anywho though, we were able to properly demonstrate the Shred of Fire as a pretty good weapon, I think. It's definitely not bad at all. In fact, I like it a little bit more. I've never really used it. It's been underused by me, and I think it's actually a pretty solid weapon. We worked through the Washburn Refinery with no real troubles with it. And so, as always, guys, I thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to see some other weapons demoed, be sure to leave those in the comments, along with any other questions or comments that you might have. If you haven't yet taken the time to subscribe, please do so. I'd really appreciate that. Otherwise, I do hope to catch you next time. Bye, guys.